Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Shoe Podcast, back with another unboxing, this time with one of my favorite releases so far for this year. That is the Claim of Stories and Saucony 3D Grid Hurricane. Let's check them out. So if you're new to the channel and this is your first video of ours that you're seeing, welcome to Shoe Podcast. We're a small sneaker channel that does weekly episodes. We also do interviews, unboxings, Instagram lives, you name it. If you like that sort of stuff, and especially if you like this unboxing, do us a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. It takes a second and actually really helps a small channel like ours. So before we get into this shoe, let's do a little bit of backstory on this collaborator. Claim of Stories is a podcast that's co-created by someone named Bima Williams. Now, we actually found out about Bima in an interview that we did with Cody Duet of Like Sushi. I'll throw a link to that on the screen right now if you haven't caught that one yet. Cody told us about Bima and his Claim of Stories podcast. It started back in 2019, and the premise of the podcast is that they do interviews with people that tell the story of how they claimed a seat at the table of these often hard to break into industries. It's a really good podcast and I highly recommend it. If you're looking for somewhere to start, they recently did an episode with Chris Gibbs of Union and his wife, Beth, that's so good and worth checking out. Focusing on Bima Williams specifically, he actually used to work at Saucony before he later went on to work at Adidas and then Nike. So when it came time for him to do a collaboration, he chose to work with Saucony he said because he views them as kind of an underdog challenger brand, but they always have these premium materials, which I think is 100% hitting the nail on the head there. They may not always have the most hype silhouettes or collaborations, but a lot of the time when they do the collaborations, the materials and the attention to detail are unlike any other. So these first released on the claimofstories.com website on September 30th for a retail price of $150. I think it was a pretty small run that they had because I got on the website like five minutes after it went live and my size was already gone. but. Luckily, I was able to grab a pair elsewhere, and they're going to be a wider release of these soon through select retailers. If you want more details on that, I would recommend following both Bima Williams and Claim of Stories on Instagram to get that info. So with all the story out of the way, let's go ahead and actually start looking at the box that the shoes come in. As you can see, it comes in the uniform Claim a Seat purple with the Claim a logo on top, their motto Claim a Seat, and then Portland Ore, which is obviously short for Portland, Oregon, where the podcast is based out of. Other than the logo on the top, you get on the front of the box here another little Claim a logo hit right next to Saucony. There's no other details on the side or the back. The bottom, I think, just has standard recycling instructions. Now, in regards to the size tag, these are, as I said, the 3D Grid Hurricane is the name of the silhouette there. The official colorway is purple slash cream. Now, I went true to size on these, which is a size 11 for me, and I found they were a very good fit on feet. I would not recommend going down half a size or up half a size unless you're looking for somewhat of a more snug or somewhat of a more roomy fit. But for me, true to size is a really good fit. Now with all that out of the way, let's get what the people actually came here for. Let's look at the shoes themselves. Let's get these open. There you go, your first little peek at it. These come with a standard brown tissue paper, nothing too fancy there. Let's go ahead and get these out of the box. I'll stop talking for a second unless you really want like the wrapping paper ASMR. So real quick, hitting on the inspiration and design mentality behind this shoe. These shoes were designed in collaboration with John Humphrey, who's the owner and founder of both Foster and Beignet Boys when they were approaching the shoe, they said that the approach they decided to take was kind of a simple and clean colorway here. They wanted to focus on highlighting the design of the sneaker rather than making it super loud and flashy or anything like that. It's very wearable, I would say. So starting to look at the shoe in hand here, you can go through the mudguard, eye stays, and logo, which all come in the Claim of Stories uniform colors of purple and gold or yellowish. And all of the materials are what they call Wolverine Silky Suede. You can feel it's very soft and premium to the touch, it's a very short hair suede, it's not long or anything like that, but super soft, very nice. Looking specifically at the mud guard here, you'll see that it's double stitched around the toe and also on the back of the heel. And then you get the Saucony logo hit right here on the lateral side or on the outside of the toe. Another small detail that I really like here is this gold stitching that's right underneath the eye stay. I think it's subtle, but it gives a lot of definition and helps shape the shoe without being distracting. So I like that they chose to remove the 3D grid Texan logo that's normally here on the back of the shoe. Again, it's not distracting. It allows you to focus on the general overall design of the shoe. Speaking to the logo that's on the midfoot right above it here, the only thing that I'll get like a little bit nitpicky about is that it feels like the edges of this logo are kind of slightly pulled up here and raised. They're separated from the support material underneath it. I don't think it's gonna be a big issue, but the only thing I'd be worried about is that over time, if those edges kind of get caught and frayed on stuff. Moving back to the toe and the midfoot and the tongue of the shoe here, you get this nice cream colored mesh. A very small detail that I didn't notice in the online images, I didn't catch it until I got them in hand, 
is that between the toe and the midfoot here, you've actually got two different kinds of mesh. On the toe, it's more of like a wide open mesh. And on the midfoot, it's more of a tight knit closed mesh, I would call it. It's very subtle. I think it's something that again, like normally you wouldn't catch, but I think subconsciously it helps give some separation between the different panels. And it's kind of a way to almost like bring a new material in, but not introduce a new color, if you know what I mean. Like it gives some differentiation, but it's not again, distracting and pulling your eye away from it. Now, speaking to the laces here, you probably noticed you get two sets of laces on these, which I always love when they throw extra laces in the box. So you can try the different options on them. You get a cream set of laces and a purple set of laces, both of which come with the Clayma logo and gold aglets on the tip of the lace there. So I doubt the camera's gonna pick that up. Maybe I'll try and get a little highlight shot there, but they both have those gold aglets on the tip. So it's a nice little detail as well. Another little place to put some branding on the shoe without it being obviously on the outside of the shoe. As far as the tongues and tags on these, you'll probably notice that there's no tongue tags on these, which is not usually the case for the 3D Grid Hurricane. That's something Bima Williams talked about was that it was in like one of the final sampling stages. He decided to kind of go out on a whim and try removing the tongue tag with an X-Acto knife and actually liked the way that it looked more, which I think I would tend to agree. It, it helps keep it really clean. The only tag that you do get on the shoes and it's a removable plastic tag here comes on the right shoe. And it says, you might not run in these, but the colors may. So keep these kicks dry as colors may bleed, which I really like because for some people, this might be the first pair of suede shoes that they get. And if you're not really like knowledgeable on how to take care of them or how to clean them, you might try to clean this pair of shoes like any other pair of shoes or sneakers that you have, which the case with suede is you want to use as very little water as possible and be very delicate with them. So I like that they kind of give you that nice little chance to learn up on it. Moving around to the back of the shoes, you'll see you have two different hits here on the heels. On the left one, you've got Clayma, and on the right one, you've got Portland. And at the top of those panels, you've got two little silver 3M reflective panels, which I think kind of catch the light a little bit, but you'll really notice them if you take a picture of these with a flash, it'll pop and like light up like nothing else. Moving to the inside of the shoes here, you'll see they come with a purple satin sock liner, which kind of gives it that luxury feel. It's very nice to the touch. Uh, and Bima Williams actually talked about how this was inspired by the sock liner on the Amma Manir Jordan 3, which, you know, has that gray quilted sock liner to it that's in satin. In a very full circle moment, the week before this shoe came out, James Whitner presented Bima Williams with the Entrepreneur of the Year Award at the Black Footwear Forum. So for these to then come out and be paying tribute back to James and his boutique Amma Manir, again, just like a very full circle moment. As far as the insole goes, they are purple. You've got the Clayma logo with the Clayma seat text and the Saucony logo. Moving down to the bottom of the shoe here, you've got a cream colored foam midsole. And I like all the different sort of sculpting and cutouts that they've got going on here and the different textures between them. Whereas the front, you've kind of got like this grid netting and then towards the back, you've got these vertical lines. And I especially like that they didn't try to fill in each section with a different color to make it pop or anything like that. So up close, you can see all the differentiation, but from afar, it's gonna look like very smooth and uniform. Lastly, moving to the bottom of the shoe, you'll see that it comes in four different colors here. You've got your brown, gold, cream, and purple. And through the bottom of the heel, you can actually see this grid and lattice pattern that's underneath it, which makes me wonder if that's where the grid in the name 3D Grid Hurricane comes from. If you know that, let us know in the comments down below. I'd love to learn up on it. So that's all the you know visual details of the shoe. Let's talk about the sizing, the fit, and the comfort of these. As I said at the top of the episode, I decided to go true to size on these. I have no prior experience with the 3D Grid Hurricane, so it was a bit of just trust, but I really like that the way that these fit. Again, I would not recommend sizing up, sizing down, unless you're looking for a very snug fit or a little bit of a wider fit. But for me, true to size is really good. There's two specific details about this shoe that makes me really like the way that it feels on foot. The first of which being all of this mesh that's on the toe and the midfoot here doesn't have another layer of material beneath it. So it's very breathable, which for those of us that are in Louisiana, you know how hot it gets down here. So like breathability in your shoes is everything. So I really like that, that you can kind of get some cooling and airflow going through them. The other thing that I really like about the way this feels on foot is this sole here. The foam at the bottom is very cushiony, but not pillowy. And if you're really into sneakers, you'll know exactly what I mean, where it's like, they're supportive, but they're not firm. It feels like you could wear them all day and they're not gonna like compress on you and bottom out as the day goes to where it gets uncomfortable. It feels like these are gonna be really nice to wear for multiple hours throughout the day. So final thoughts on these, starting with how do they look in hand compared to online? 
I'll admit when these first came out, I'm a little bit of a sucker for local collaborators or collaborators that come from Louisiana or just any good collaboration. If you've watched our show, you know that that's obvious to you. Uh, so I was pretty sold on these quickly, but I was admittedly a little bit nervous about the colorway. Being someone that lives in Baton Rouge, it's hard to see purple and gold and not immediately affiliate it with LSU and think, if I wear these, is everyone gonna wanna talk to me about the Tigers game this past weekend? Uh, but I'm very happy to say that in person, I think the colors are maybe not as vibrant as they look online, but for me, that's a very good thing. They look a lot more muted and subdued, and that for me makes them a lot more wearable. The other thing that I really love about this collaboration is the approach they took with a subtle, simplified design. I think they 1000% made the right call to remove that 3D grid logo that's on the back of the midfoot, as well as the tongue tag. I mean, if you look at the shoe, there's a Saucony logo on the tongue, there's a Saucony logo on the middle of the shoe, and there's a Saucony logo on the back of the heel here. There's enough Saucony logos to know that it's a Saucony without a 3D grid logo and a tongue tag on it as well. And they still get to claim a hit on the heel there so you know what it is. So the choice to remove the logos, the tongue tags, to keep the color palette to really like three colors here, all really good and make this shoe very wearable for someone like me that is not always looking for the flashiest pair of kicks to have on their feet. Now, if you really like this collaboration, I've got two pieces of good news for you here. The first one being that Bima Williams has already kind of teased that this might be the first part in a series. So I don't know if that means another colorway, another silhouette, another brand that they're working with, but the writing on the wall is that there is more to come here. Secondly, if you missed out on the release of these through the Claim of Stories release on their website, or if you're just finding out about them for the first time, do not panic and rush to pay resale on these. Again, there's going to be a wider release through select retailers. I don't know if that's US based or globally, but again, I would recommend following both Claim of Stories and Bima Williams on Instagram for more details as they become available. So yeah, I think that's gonna do it for me in the review here. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Again, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what do you think of this collaboration? Is this something that you like or something you wouldn't wear? Do you really mess with Saucony as a brand at all? Leave a comment, let us know. We're gonna reply to some of our favorites and maybe even pin a couple. As always, this is Ryan from Shoe Podcast. Catch you all in the next one.